Welcome to Emotional Savvy, the Relationship Help Show. I'm Dr. Roberta Shaler. If you're ready to increase your confidence in conversations and conflict, deepen your self-awareness, expand your connectedness, and enrich your relationship with yourself and other humans you care about, and even those you wish you didn't, you're in the right place. Enjoy today's episode. Hello, I'm glad you're here. I'm always excited when you're here because that means that you have found value. And if this is your first time here, we're going to provide some value for you today that will help you move your life forward. Whether you are in the worst spot you've ever been in or you're getting out of a terrible spot or life is going really well and you just want to make sure you don't get into any of those bad spots that you could prevent, all that you will learn in Emotional Savvy can help you with that. And today is no exception. Today we're talking about vulnerability and intimacy, real intimacy. And sometimes we just think of that in a sexual way or a physical way. And really that's a lovely. Yes, of course, physical intimacy is lovely. Sex is lovely. Uh, having a great relationship with someone is lovely. But Really being known, known right down to your toes, having that safety to have conversations with another human being, knowing that they will take what you say with interest and curiosity and want to hear and want to listen. Above all, they want to also listen so that you can have a back and forth conversation that is ever deepening and it's curious and it's interest based. This is what true emotional intimacy is. And you don't have to be afraid that somebody is going to take what you've said in a vulnerable moment, in a transparent moment, in a moment where you're endeavoring to create a tighter bond. They're not going to take what you said in that moment and then go out and use it against you. They're not going to use it as ammunition in your next conversation or argument or discussion. And that's one of the big things that happens when we're with difficult people is that if we do have that intimate moment and we share something that is coming from a place of vulnerability, they just seem to love to take it, put it behind their back as ammunition for future fights. Have you noticed that? They do. And it's so, so devastating when they do that because you honestly believed you got that moment. You connected with that person. You were so happy that they wanted to know you. They were listening. And if you're with a hijackal, those were moments that were carefully set up because they would get you to let your guard down. They would get you to tell you, tell them, to talk about, to be in that conversation of vulnerability. And then, wow, They got their fodder. They got their emotional fodder to throw at you later on. You know what I'm talking about, right? Whether that's your mother or a partner or a boss, a friend, this happens. Nothing is sacred. Everything can be turned against you. And this is when we get afraid of intimacy. It kind of scares us off. If I let someone that close to me, If I honestly want that and demonstrate that and let them in and then they use it against me, where am I ever safe? It's a really big conversation. I've had that in my life. You know, of course we long for intimacy. We long, you know, as I wrote in Kaizen for Couples, we long to be seen, heard, known, acknowledged, appreciated, and accepted. And all of those things are the components of emotional intimacy. So we want that and we're willing to give that. And then that startling, horrible, rug pulled out from under you moment that comes when you've done that and the other person uses it as a weapon against you. They weaponize your words. So we want to learn how to create safety, how to deepen emotional intimacy, how to recover from being with a hijackal, 
so very very important and spiritually you know we want to be able to understand that we are in a universe that has our back that supports us in a positive way when an individual human does not it does not mean that the universe also does not so we need encouragement to move in that direction and we're certainly going to have that today with today's guest today's guest is Alana Pratt and she is an intimacy expert she's so fun she's a good friend of mine and just so fun I mean imagine how much fun she is she's drawn to herself four million YouTube viewers four million so you'll want to go and see her too but first of all you want to listen to what she has to say today because we're going to talk about experiences that she had and how she learned to live an unapologetic life to you know I talk about it all the time that you want to know that you have every right to take up space and draw breath that's your right and then to live fully and unapologetically and Alana is certainly doing that and she gives us all kinds of tips for that so we want to know how not to get hooked on the bad stuff and have it be preventing us from having good stuff coming into our lives so we don't want to do that we don't want to get hooked on it or hung up on it we want to know we can get past it we can live past it we can grow past it and that's what we're going to talk about in the next segment on emotional savvy I'm Dr. Roberta Shaler I'd love to help you if you're stuck in any way or hooked up hung up on things that have happened in the past especially with those hijackals those humans who are relentlessly difficult always looking for the advantage always ready to just sort of take your life blood there always want power over you control over you and they're constantly hounding you so lots to do today if I can help you please come on over to for relationshiphelp.com for relationship help help.com my youtube channel has the same name for relationship help lots there for you you can also become a member and be part of my 21 steps to empowered emotional savvy program and interact with me personally you can do that at forrelationshiphelp.com slash ESC ESC for Emotional Savvy Circle ESC forrelationshiphelp.com slash ESC that's one way that you can get to talk to me and you can have your questions answered so lots for you there and lots for you here let's enjoy this interview with Alana Pratt and learn more about how to get the true intimacy in life that we want with ourselves so that we can have it with other people and the universe hello and welcome to emotional savvy I'm dr. Roberta Shaler as usual I am so excited I'm always so excited because I have the best guests ever and today I have a friend a colleague a fellow Canadian and uh, we're both transplanted here in the United States so this is my friend Alana Pratt and I'm delighted to welcome you Alana oh Dr. Roberta I'm so grateful to be here I feel like you are someone I could talk to for days and days so don't worry listeners it's our viewers it's only going to be <laughs> the 30 minutes but there's something so wonderful about the space you hold we can go so deep so fast in such contribution to others so I'm really honored privileged to be here thank you well we alana and i had a kind of soul sister experience a little while ago so i absolutely feel the same way and we could go on for weeks but we, won't. <laughs> but we might come back and do it again another day so. okay <laughs> because this is going to be a topic that we haven't talked about in quite this way ever 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 on emotional savvy so you're going to love it let me tell you a little bit about alana um, she is an intimacy expert. First clue, it's going to be different. <laughs> then she inspires open-hearted, unapologetic living with delicious sass. Item number two for why it's going to be different. 
<laughs> her inspiring vulnerability and courage has landed her as a featured weekly column on the Good Man Project, features a, as an icon of influence. She's a guest expert on CBS, TLC, Forbes, People Magazine, Huffington Post, a cum laude graduate of Columbia University, the author of four books. She has an amazing podcast. You've got to go and listen to it. It's called Intimate Conversations with Alana. And uh, you cannot stop listening because it's quite addictive. And you can go to her YouTube channel and have the same experience because she has over 3.7 million people and they can't be wrong, right? So <laughs> she's had some challenges. She's been through some stuff and that's the best way to learn. We all have great experience. When we bring our expertise to our experience, things change. So Alana, what do you think was the pivotal experience in your life that led you to doing intimate conversations? Mm. Well, a lot happened later in my life. I would say the pivotal one was when I was 16 and my friend was supposed to come over for the weekend at two of them. I was out at the lake. This is Canada, right? British Columbia. And my friend came down the stairs and said, James is dead. And I said, oh, you too, you're up to your silly stuff again. And then her parents walked down the stairs with such solemn faces. And it was true. Dr. Roberta, like my cat hadn't died. My grandma's hadn't died. Nobody died. I was 16. There was, you know, I was unstoppable. And I remember running along the highway. It was like two lane highway and looking up at the trees, the, the big, huge fir trees, pine trees, and just thinking if I could scream no long enough, this wouldn't be true. Mm. And apparently there was screeching cars and they, there was a death. And my sweet dad, I remember he walked down the yellow line of this highway towards me and he grabbed my shoulders and he goes, look, if this is it, if you're never going to see them again, let's get off. There, there is spirit after death. We, come back home. Come down. Let's talk about this. And I didn't think, I mean, my dad was like an alcoholic and drug abuser and, you know, not necessarily the best dad ever. But in that moment, he was my hero. He, he showed me there was something beyond what I even knew. So I had the opportunity for death and then spirituality all in this moment. And I remember as I, I later that afternoon, um, I'd gone bike riding with my friends to try to make me feel better. And I came down and Dr. Roberta, it was a clear blue sky. But as we came back down the, the road and we looked at the cabin from the distance, there were two rainbows right mm -hmm. over my cabin. And I got head to toe shivers and I'm like, whoa, there is something more to life than what I see. And damn, I'm going to choose one way. I never met them and I never felt this pain or I met them. And I felt this pain and I'm going to learn how to get through this, keep my heart open, learn about spirituality, and I'm going to keep living. So I chose, I chose the second choice. And that was 16 years old. I'm 48 now. And, and every time that I'm afraid to say, I love you, I take a breath. And I say, I love you. Every time I'm, I'm wanting to send an email out, but I'm afraid maybe I might get rejected. I send the email out. And you, you're a transplant. I'm a transplant. Like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna wonder what if. I'm willing mm -hmm. to risk. I've got my own back. I have a relationship with spirit. And thank goodness that that happened. And I responded the way I did because it, it's led me to being an intimacy expert today. Yes, and intimacy exists on so many levels. So we want to talk about the different levels. You know, so frequently, immediately, we go to the physical intimacy when we hear that word. But physical intimacy is only one part, and it can be quite a lonely part, although sometimes a great fun experience, without emotional intimacy or even an intellectual intimacy or so many kinds. So talk yes. to us about intimacy. Mm. When you use that word, what do you mean? I mean a vulnerable, transparent, honest, raw relationship with self first. Like looking inside to that part of me that was so crushed when my friend died or crushed when I went through a divorce or crushed when my son chose to live with his dad or crushed when the bank account, do you know that lightning doesn't strike when your bank account goes below zero? I didn't know that, you know, <laughs> but apparently you still get to live. Um, so these moments to, can I have my own back? 
and have this intimate, raw, real, hey, little one, you're scared and I'm not going to go anywhere and I'm not going to fix you and I'm willing to sit in the dark with you for eternity and keep my heart open to you, even though, even though, even though, right? That kind of intimate relationship with self is what I'm talking about. And can you bring that presence in the face of anything to lovemaking, to bank accounts, to your children when they're pissing you off, to a friend when you need to have that conversation where the, the friendship doesn't feel balanced, right? You feel maybe you're giving more than you're receiving. All these areas of life you can bring intimacy to. You can bring it to nature. You can make love with nature just with let its beauty have its way with you. It's available at all times. We never need to feel alone. So you see why she has seven, 3.7 million people on YouTube? Actually, I think I'm just about to tip to 4 million. It was 3 million 970 something or other. But anyways, oh, thank well, you. Let, let's thank celebrate. You. Here we go. <laughs> what is that? I love it. <laughs> my wand it makes oh. everything wonderful and celebrates so well. I need, a, I need a wand. I never knew I didn't have a wand. Okay. Who knew? Who knew? knew? I didn't know till I had one either. But you know what you're expressing, Alana, is, you know, joy, joy yeah. and connection, joy in the celebration of being at one mm -hmm. and, and feeling that and allowing yourself to have it and to let it in. And yeah. when you use the word unapologetic in yeah. your introduction, I mean, we want to live an unapologetic life that we can actually express and we can risk and we can be vulnerable and we can be humble and we can be happy and we can be proud and we can be everything. Yes. You know, what I talk about all the time, and I know we're aligned on this, is that we deserve to take up space and draw breath and we have to live from that place. Yes. Fist pump on that one. Yes. yes. <laughs> so, you know, I hope everybody who's listening gets this. You absolutely deserve to take up space and draw breath. And yes. then there's the next part, which is my definition of assertive, mm -hmm. which is that you then get, never saying the word you or talking about another human, you then get to say how you feel, what you think, what you need, and what you want. Yeah. Yeah. And that's okay. In fact, that's wonderful. Yes. And that's the kind of intimacy with yourself that you were expressing, isn't it? Totally true. And it's so great that you're saying all of this, that we deserve, we matter, we can take up space, we can speak our truth, all the rest of it. One of the things that happens when you start to live unapologetically is when you be like this, two things happen. One, you're an inspiration and a leader to so many, just by being who you are without even trying, just by entering a room, letting yourself shine is an inspiration to others. Number two, you instantly piss off others. <laughs> There's the risk factor. <laughs> no, the ones that don't want to shine would rather pull you down. Yes. Yes. And so when, as long as you know this going into it, that half, let me not half, probably like 10% are going to think you're a guru. Oh my God. And you're not a guru. You put your pants on the same as everybody. Okay. But they're going to think you're a guru. And the other 10% is, are going to think you're the devil and you're not, you're just living fully and willing to take up space. So those kind of energies sort of collapse on each other. They kind of cancel each other out. So, so, so you're, you're allowing of that. You don't resist that. You don't buy into it that you're holier than thou. No, you're not. You're just like everybody else. But you also don't buy into any of their criticism. It's just their point of view. Thank you for sharing. And you just let both of those kind of calm down and leave to the side. And you just walk through the center, heart open, connected to self. And your people, your clients, your lover, your friends, they'll be there on that center aisle of your like vibration. You don't even have to try. Just keep showing up and don't get hooked into either of these polarities or these pendulums. And I'm not saying that's easy. I'm saying that's simple. The concept is simple, but it takes practice. So be gentle, be kind, and be persistent. Mm -hmm. Couldn't agree more. And here's the way I express it. Yes. People like to be in charge of the boat. And when you want to be in charge of the boat, you will oversteer and you will end up hitting this shore and then that shore, and then this shore, and yes. then that shore. But if you actually put yourself in the center, as you said, mm -hmm. the tide will take you to your destination. You will flow 
Okay. I have shivers as you're saying that you're so right. I love you. Okay. So, so for me, this, this, the, the tide, the flow, that's the universe. Mm -hmm. When I got that the universe cared about me that much. And when I interview, I'm such a nerd. I interview all these quantum physicists on my show. When I got that the field is a feedback loop that's checking in with me and my vibration a million times a second. Something cares about me a million times a second. Are you kidding me? And that's the universe. So you're right. And it's, it's a tide and it's real and it's energy and it's for you. And, and that's why I might be alone sometimes, but I'm not lonely anymore. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Lovely. So let's tie this together with emotional savvy because all these things connect for sure. So let's just talk the hard stuff. Have you ever been in a relationship with somebody that I would call a hijackal, a relentlessly difficult person who wants to hijack a relationship for his or her own purposes and then scavenge it for power, status, and control? Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> and I've been in a court battle for over a decade with that person. Uh, yeah. And I lost the house and the savings and went into a quarter of a million dollars of legal debt. And the son turned for a period of time with the father as well. And yeah, so I've, I've hit my, <laughs> I've been on my knees many, 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 many a time. Um, and the, the, the gift of this was again, as we said, this intimate relationship with self. When I was looking outwardly for control, approval, agreement, I'm really not a bad person. No, really, I'm not crazy. No, really. And I was trying to justify and prove my existence. I got hooked. I got hooked. But when I did the inner work and I knew, call me crazy, fine, call me crazy, that's fine. I guess I am a little crazy sometimes. (laughs) Aren't we all? Call me a bad mom. Well, you know what? I'm not a perfect mom. I'm a pretty good mom, but no, I'm not perfect. Okay, I've had my moments of being bad. When there's nothing to justify, because I have such an intimate relationship with myself, I no longer get hooked by the hijackal. But when I needed to be right, to, to make sure he got that I was good enough, or the court that I was good enough, I, I failed every time. Mm-hmm. Such important stuff. I hope everybody is really taking this in. I'm talking with Alana Pratt. She's an intimacy expert. And we're talking about the fact that we can be experts. We can have all, do you know why we can be? Because we've been there. We've done that. We have the ugly video and the ratty t-shirt. You know, it's all happened to us. And And so we take that and we do with it what we do. And what we're talking about here is that both of us chose to do something that was opening, that was broadening, that was mind expanding. We had a choice and you have a choice too. So we want to emphasize that you could choose. You could shrivel up and you could say, oh, the universe hates me and this is a terrible thing and everybody's out to get me and nobody really knows who I am. And you can shrink and you can shrink or you cannot do that. It is a choice. Now, you know, Mm -hmm. listen to a quarter of a million dollars in debt because somebody wanted to win so badly that they kept taking you to court because that's what hijackals do. But when you got into the middle of that river and you got into the flow and all, well, okay, this is the journey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's not about being smart. I mean, for heaven's sakes, you've got an Ivy league education. It's not about that. No, it's about from the moment we drew, drew breath yeah. Until the moment that we dealt with something and it brings everything to bear, but it doesn't keep us from being who we were raised to be or taking the things that have been given to us and having not examined them, we get into situations with hijackals. Yeah. Yeah. I see now that it's very much behind me and I'm integrating my lessons and and in all humility, I couldn't have got through this without my coaches. I'm a coach, full coaching practice, but I have always one or two coaches, sometimes three in my back pocket so that I can be supported through it all and, and be in integrity. But what I see, what they helped me see was that my hijackal was my spiritual teacher. Mm-hmm. When my point of view was poor me, he's the bad guy. I got hooked in the pendulum and the pendulum just kept swinging and swinging. But when I went, wait a minute, different point of view, I could say quarter of a million dollars of legal debt, but in parentheses, poor Lana, right? Victim, victim. <laughs> Or I could say, wait a minute, 
That was a PhD in consciousness from one of the best universities in the galaxies. It's a little expensive, but that's the best university. And I went, and here's what I learned. Total shift in point of view from victim to victor. When I go, oh, the hijackal poor me, I feel like a, a victim and martyr. When I say, hey, my greatest spiritual teacher is my ex. And let me tell you what I learned and why I'm so grateful for who I've become in all of these different areas. It dissolves the power. I get off of that pendulum and I see that he taught me to open my heart in the face of anything, no longer define my worth by another person's opinion of me. Yay. To, realize, to realize that I too am everything. I am dark. I am light. When I want to call him, a, <laughs> where am I that? Mm-hmm. Maybe not on the same scale or example, but I am that too. I am not holier than thou. Where can I take responsibility and up my game too? So according to his point of view, I'm this really horrible person because I rejected him. I left him. I divorced yes. him. So to, from his point of view, I'm the devil. So it doesn't condone his behavior, but it's not, it, it gives me a little bit of heart opening and release for me to take my power back, get the lessons and no longer engage, but turn towards the horizon to the sunrise and choose a new path. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm grateful. And good. You know, that's a great choice because that's you choosing affirming life. And, yes. and that's good. So there, you know, a woman said to me yesterday, she said, you know, well, my child is just behaving badly because he has a hijackal father Mm -hmm. and he's turning into a bit of a hijackal himself. And Mm -hmm. she said, I'm going to show him, you know, I'm going to do what he does to me and I'm going to see how he feels about it. And, and she was looking to me for affirmation, Alana. And so I said to her, I have a question. Yeah. Who are you? And she said, what do you mean? What do you mean? I said, what, what do you choose to demonstrate in this circumstance yes are you him are you going to show him because you are that person too Mm -hmm. and it took about five minutes of conversation before the penny really dropped for her that she said well what would you do if you were in my circumstances i'd say sit down and think about your values and think yeah. about your vision for your life and your beliefs and your purposes on this earth and say, if I'm responding from my authentic self, mm-hmm. what would I do? Right. And he was like, whoa. I just, <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, are you a person who does those things? You right. know, I, I think back to a coaching client that I had. And he was fairly new. He was an executive and I was doing a lot of executive coaching at the time. And, and he was on the phone with me and he said, well, I just had to do something. He said, this guy came into my office. I didn't like the way he was. And I tried to tell him that he had to change. And eventually he wouldn't. And I finally yelled at him. And then I swore at him. And I threw him out of my office. Oh, my. And he, okay. and he, yeah. And he said, so what do you think? I said, <laughs> well, I don't know you very well. But you just told me that you're a person who gets angry, yells, swears, and throws people out of your office. He said, oh, no, I don't do that. He said, it was that guy. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not that guy, is it, Alana? Yeah. In the face of that, who do we choose to be? Yeah, in the face of all. I mean, being on the court stand, I mean, I was on the court stand for years. In the beginning on the court stand, and those angry lawyers would come after me, I was afraid. I would cower, or I would overreact, or I would blame. I would play right into their cards. And by the end, I was able to receive, and I remembered I have choice. They're trying to ask me a question that's all nasty, but I have choice and I would receive the question. I would remember my posture. I would breathe and I would say, I understand what you just said, but let me tell you the truth of this. And I would calmly say exactly what happened and they would be straight from the record. Shut her up straight from the record. And I would just keep talking the truth. And then I would lean in. And what is your next question? Like I owned the courtroom in the beginning, such a victim to this kind of thing. And so what we learn, if we choose to learn from hijackals, is that we're at choice on how we react or respond, that nobody is going to tell us how to act. Nobody's holding a gun to our head. We're at choice, right, of how we choose to be. And they are our spiritual practice to stay centered, grounded, aligned with our values, and lead by that. So back to your statement about the, the mother and the son becoming kind of hijackal in qualities, 
in all transparency, when I first started this journey back at the beginning, when my child was like five or six, I would blame the Dan. I can't believe that that just said, blah, blah. so, okay, that was old Alana. Didn't go so well. New Alana or transformed and done my growth Alana, I would just be in the present. I would say, wow, if he would complain about his dad. So how does that make you feel? I would just be curious. I would let him figure it out himself. And I would be more of the space, the centered, spacious, listening, no judgment, no fixing, just get him. And he's wise. The kids get it. And I think that's a better way for the kids to grow over time because I believe they choose us. I believe they choose this experience. I don't believe in victims. And so they're getting this context often between two styles of person, two styles of parenting. And if you can help them get the lesson quicker by not blaming the other parent and helping them think, helping them be aware, helping them discern, helping them trust their feelings and guiding them perhaps to people like you or I in terms of supporting their communication skills. I think these kids are going to learn at 15 or 20, what took me till 40 or 45 (laughs) to learn. And that's a good thing. Yeah, I I think that they are going to be much improved. You know, one of the things we have to all take into consideration, and remember, everything that you're hearing here, you see why I said it was going to be a completely different experience and you're going to want to have it again. Um, But what we have to take into consideration with our children too is that our brain growth, our brain growth is not complete till we're 25 years old. So things that got tucked into our brain or ways of feeling or ways of doing or whatever, they're there and they often aren't examined. We certainly don't examine them when we're eight. We don't usually examine them when we're 16 because heaven knows we know everything. Um, So it takes a while for these things to happen, but we have to trust. So I want to shift right there about the trust, Alana. So if a person has been with a hijackal, they don't feel safe. They've been walking on eggshells. They might not even feel safe in their body. How do you get them to open their heart? How do you help someone open their yeah. heart? So some of it's my intuitive capacity. This is my gift. Some of it is all the training that I've had from different coaches over, over the years. But I basically have these two processes. One is a very, it's a quantum psychology healing of trauma. We need to be able to get the trauma healed, flattened with brain chemistry in in, in your body. You can't create on top of emotional triggers. You just can't. So part of it has to be handling all of that stuck trauma within the body. Part two, I use the visual of little you to go inside and learn to soothe themselves as they navigate intense emotion and to be non-judgmental and patient with themselves. So that would be part two. So these insides, the the caca energy is gone and the soothing, unconditional patience of eternity love is present deep inside their hearts. Then you've got your own back. Then the little you inside might not feel safe with the hijackal, but at least feel safe with you and the universe. And then something happens in the body sensations, the central nervous system. You start to feel safe in your body again. I'm not opposed to self-defense classes as well. So it's not all internal. The dual toroidal field goes in both directions for infinity. So you need to do stuff on the outside and stuff on the inside. So that would be another example of the safety inwardly, emotionally, and also physically to really stand in your physical power as well. So those would be like some of the inner fundamental things. And then from this place, you actually have the capacity to weather the storm. I really don't think... You can do it successfully or for any length of time when your body literally goes into trauma, when it gets triggered, you're doing your best. But until that trauma is healed, I think all you can do is survive, but not thrive. Mm -hmm. And until you have your own back and you truly hold little you safe and sound, even if they're being nasty and you understand what it feels like to be home, safe, secure, approved of unconditionally forever on the inside, no matter whatever happens on the outside. There's a click that happens. It's like a moment of grace on the inside where you know you're, it's even not you're enough. You just, I am, I'm home, I'm okay. This is a real state. It's an energetic state, an emotional state, a physical state, a central nervous system state. You can get there. And from there, these, all that we teach, the communication skills, the choices in your life, you can stand with them. You can follow through with them in a way. And otherwise, I call it sprinkles on top of the ice cream cone of crap. 
yeah, that's all it is. It's just improvement. It's just relief. And I normally don't say crap, but on your show, I promised I wouldn't swear. So, <laughs> <laughs> but otherwise it's just relief and improvement and you're always underneath terrified. And that's no way to live when there's solutions. available. No, it isn't. And let's just all take a big breath after that. Yeah. Because it is no way to live. And yet you're in charge of how you live. Totally. Yeah. And that's the joy of it. It might scare you a little bit, but that's the joy that you can walk toward. And yeah. that's your path. That's your best path with yeah. an open heart. So the time goes so quickly when we're having so much fun. But I asked Alana yeah. I, what question I might be able to ask her. And I'm going to ask her the very question she wrote down. So you know oh. a little something more about Alana. Okay. And remember, you want to learn more, you go to alanapratt.com. And that's A-L-L-A-N-A-P-R-A-T-T.com. Alanapratt.com. So here's the question she wrote down. Mm. I can't remember. Uh, I'm all excited. What did I say? <laughs> How does a woman forgive herself for spreading her legs to an abuser and actually open to honoring noble, respectful love again? Mm. Yeah, thank you. I forgot I wrote that, but that's a good question. So how I did that was actually through more of movement. We've talked a lot about different points of view. We've talked about healing um, processes, etc. But I danced this one out. I got angry. I stomped around in, I, I used to pole dance. I don't so much anymore, but I had these thigh high black patent boots, Dr. Roberta, and I went stiff. In fact, I, I, broke, I broke the heel actually the first time I bought them and I had to go get another pair. I was so mad and I got it out of my body. Yeah. I got it out of my body. I cried in the fetal position. I stamped around. I, I, I did everything I could to, to process through movement. I think as for the feminine, a lot of masculine is about meditation and stillness. And I think the feminine is about fluidity and movement. So I danced it out. I took dance classes. I got it out and I forgave myself. I cradled myself. I just in the fetal position cried enough, loved myself enough. And I just decided you did your best and I love you no matter what forever. And it's like a homecoming. And it's not a thought and a cognitive analysis of a situation, which is lovely, but it doesn't, it's got to be embodied. It's got to be in your cells. And so I would encourage you to dance out your anger, dance out your sadness, dance out your shame, dance out your guilt, dance out, dance out your what if I wish I could have, would have, dance it out, dance it out, get it out. And then do something very sacred in a sacred dance of coming home to yourself. Wrap yourself in imaginary angel wings. Wrap yourself in a cashmere blanket. Hold little you like a pillow in your arms. Sob. And then get up. Get up. Stand up. I say put on thigh high black <laughs> patent boots, but you can wear what you want. Stand up and open your heart and don't look back. And move forward with the support of me and you and all the wonderful other people that I'm sure are on your path. Stand up in sisterhood. And, um, and then soon, when you're ready and you have that inner resilience with self, this inner home with self, it's, it's the whole picture. It's the yin, the yang, the masculine, the feminine. It's the whole kit and caboodle. Then as you move forward, you will run into your vibrational match as I have. After all of this time, I'm with such a beautiful man who's so good to me and mm -hmm. so honoring to me. Mm -hmm. And I know it's because he is the outer reflection of the inner communion of the masculine and feminine inside me. And um, not like I'm good enough, like not earned it like that, but I earned it. I did the work. I did the work to find home on the inside. And now I get to have it in his arms. Yeah. Lovely. And isn't that what we all are wanting? Yeah. We want to have that match, not the up or down. We want to have the flow and the yin and the yang and all of those things together. And you've said it so beautifully, Alana. So mm. thank you for that. Mm. And everyone, she has a gift for you. She has a seven-part complimentary training. Here's what it's called. <laughs> Vulnerability is the new sexy. <laughs> and you will find that at alanaprat.com slash vulnerability. It's in the show notes as well. So don't worry, you don't have to rush and write it down. You can just look below and you can 
click on the link. Mm. So thank you so much for being with us, Alana. And if you could say just one thing that you want everybody to remember right this minute, what would it be? Mm. I'd like everyone to remember that they are divine. That yes, we are wobbly and yes, life gets messy and yes, we're perfectly imperfect, yet we're also divine. So if you could just go to bed tonight looking in the mirror and just look and, and look back, find, see that divine part of you. There's just something about remembering that that helps us through the dark times. So you are perfectly imperfect and you are absolutely divine. Lovely. And as you look in the mirror, look deeply in your eyes and say, I love you. I accept you and I approve of you just the way you are. Mwah. Yes. And then slap your ass. Ow! <laughs> and right with those thigh high black boots. Okay. Well, thank you, Alana, for being oh, with us. Thank you so much. This has been beautiful. Thank you for all that you do in the world as well. It's a pleasure and a joy because I get to play with people like you. So my guest today has been Alana Pratt, where you'll find her at alanapratt.com, A-L-L-A-N-A-P-R-A-T-T.com. She has a gift for you. So you want to get vulnerability is the new sexy. And uh, whether you get the thigh high leather high heels or whether you have a whip or you do not, or whatever it is. <laughs> oh, yes, maybe this is a little more gentle and happy making for you. I don't know, but um, for certain, you've opened some minds, mm. opened some hearts, and opened some great topics of conversation. Thank I'm you. Dr. Roberta Shaler. I'm glad you were with us. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to go and look at others. We always have great gifts, very great guests for you. And if you enjoyed this, bring a friend next time. Love to have you both here. Take good care, and we'll talk soon. Thanks for being here for today's episode of Emotional Savvy. If you want to deepen your emotional savvy, make shifts in your relationships, and enjoy life and relationships more, work with me, Dr. Roberta Shaler. Get my books, enjoy my courses, or work with me directly. You can do that by visiting forrelationshiphelp.com, F-O-R, relationship, H-E-L-P.com, and subscribe to Tips for Relationships now. Don't miss a thing. Be empowered this week with more emotional savvy.